Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, and praise the Lord and hallelujah. God is so good, and he's so worthy to be praised. Let us pray. Eternal and all-wise God, we come to you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. God, first, foremost, and always to say thank you. We thank you for everything before we ask you for anything, God. We ask that in the name of Jesus, God, that you bless and meet the needs of your people. Bless Hemingway, God. And God, I ask that you remove rods out the way and that let you speak to and through this vessel and that your people are blessed. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. This morning, we're going to talk about um, seeking God's face, seeking God's face. And using as a scripture, to, um, the scripture this morning will be Second Chronicles 7.14. And it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And I'm going to use as a, a small portion of this of this scripture where it says seek my face seek his face and a lot of people sometimes say well i'm seeking his face what does that really mean what in the in the hebrew word for face in the old testament it often it's often translated as presence so we're seeking the presence of god and when we seek the face of god we are seeking his presence and the call to seek God's face was issued to his people primarily because they had abandoned him and needed to return to him. And it also, when you think about the face of someone, and I can, I'm going to use Roz as use me as an example. If you look at my face, a lot of time you, you will, you can look at my, you will look at my personality. You can look at my characteristics because as people say, you know, I wear my, my my emotions on my sleeve. In other words, it's all over my face. You can see the inward emotions, the el- the outward emotions, um, and a lot of times you can see that that those characteristics of us, and we recognize a person by looking at their face and by seeing their face. But one's face represents the whole person, you know. And for the writers in the Bible, the human face could represent the entire person. Um, but when you look at it, God's um, faithfulness has always been there. Even even though he has not abandoned us quite often when we are not where we're supposed to be, God is always there, but we are not always present. And the truth of the matter is the more we seek his face, the more we seek his presence, the more we try to get closer to him, the closer we get. But the more we don't seek him, the more we don't request his presence, the more we step away from it, the further we get from him. And so how do I actually get to that place where I am actually seeking his presence? What what does that mean? First, you know, when we go to him in prayer, we have to actually humble ourselves. And And when we humble ourselves, what does that mean? Because we use that quite often when we are in church, oh, humble yourself. It means that we're acknowledging that we got weakness and that it also means that we're acknowledging the fact that we can't do anything without him. It does mean that we have to go bow down to him and that he is Lord and that we, if we, the Lord's desire is to be in a constant companionship with us and so because he's Lord, that means that we have to be the one to fall down on our faces. Everything we have and everything we do comes from him. And so as we're looking at the characteristics of the father, of the one who created us in the first place, of the one who is the healer, of the one who is the provider, of the one who, who is our peace and our joy, that, those are the characteristics of God. We are seeking those things, but we can't get them without them. And in spite of us, regardless of how much we mess up, regardless of how much we don't turn from the things that we say that we are, he loves us anyway. And his love is another what? 
another characteristic of the one who did who created us of God himself and and as I was looking at it and looking at how God has changed us even at Hemingway in the past couple of years as we continue to seek the Holy Spirit and as the Holy Spirit is growing on the inside of us and as we're allowing to open our hearts to him, that's part of that presence. We want that we want that encounter with him. We want his presence all over us. We want to be able to feel him and have people see him in us and genuinely, genuinely seek his face, genuinely be in his presence, genuinely want to be changed. I find myself wanting to be so close to God and wanting to be even more closer to him and and purify my heart. And so we want our hearts to be purified and our loyalty to be to him, not to all the stuff that we have going on. And let's be clear, we are never going to be perfect. Our goal is to be Christ-like, to move forward, to move forward with him and him in us. But as he's doing that, we have to sit still and let him move in us. And he said, well, what does that mean? Sometimes we got to wait on him. Uh, There's a song by Nia Allen that said, wait, wait on him. As he abides in us, wait on him. As he uses us, we still got to wait on him. As we go through hell and back, wait on him. And as we are looking for his presence and as we are moving forward that encounter with him and as we're growing in him, we have to wait on him and watch him move. Watch him move so much that as we're moving forward that the greatness of God, but we have to pray so much. Uh, In the scripture it says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by by a false god, they will receive a blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such as is the generation of those who seek him, who seek his face, God of Jacob, and that's, and you will find that in Psalm 24, 3 through 6. The true, the, the true nature of worship is in the presence of God is to worship in him. Worship him. The, Christian, the Christian walk is a life of devoted and seeking God's presence. The Lord wants us to humbly trust and tr- that trusting, that means that we're putting, self, are putting ourselves aside and trusting in the one. That, that, that intimacy with God, knowing that when we pray, that we know that we know God can do anything, knowing that as we trust, we trust blindly. We should be trusting blindly because he's done so much for us. You know, if you look back in your rearview mirror, and I say your rearview, look back over your life. As I said, when you look back over your life and you think things over, you know that God has done so much in our lives. He has healed us. He has delivered us. He's been keeping us. He's done signs and wonders, and we didn't even realize we needed to be kept when he has kept us in the midst of it all. Even though some of us are going through a wilderness experience right now, God is keeping us. Seek his presence in the midst of your storm, in the midst of all that you're going through. It, it, it's amazing because it, it, it's amazing. Pursuing God's presence is also is equivalent to making and developing an intimate relationship with him. I earnestly dare you, I, I dare you to start keep asking God, say, I'm seeking your face, God. I, I want your presence all day, God. And every hour on the hour, 
Set your alarm on your phone door. And every hour, if it's not every moment, I, 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 I ask that you reach out to him and say, God, thank you. I thank you for your presence today. I, I thank you for all that you're doing for me today. We didn't have to get up this morning and see the sunshine. We didn't have to be able to open up our eyes. But because God loved us so much, he's given us another opportunity to be in his presence today. His mercy today, his guidance today, his love today, just because he's God. Gaze upon his glory and ask him. You know, he, it says he will never, not, we, he never abandons us. He will never forsake us. He keeps us. He loves us so much. But the presence of God. Being in his, that, that moment with him where things will change, the presence of God, where his love is unfailing of you, feel it on the inside. It's such a difference when you have that relationship with him. It's a difference when you feel his, his love on the inside. It's a difference. I'm so grateful Having God's face or his presence smile on us is such a blessing. It's a love and a favor that nobody else has. If you don't have a relationship with him, you won't be able to feel it on the inside. If you love him, you will know his presence. The the God that we serve is so amazing that his smile and, and his, his gracious uh, unto him. It said, may the Lord smile on you and be gracious unto you. That, that's um, the New Living Translation. That's number 625. And you'll also see it in Psalms um, 83, um, 83 um, verses 3, 7, and 19. But when you draw close to him and we are blessed with his shining favor, oh, all you have to do is pursue his presence. I, I, I've been overwhelmed with him as as I get closer to him. And I just want to challenge you that as we trust him, trust him to take care of us. Trust him to love us because he does. Trust him to continue to bless. Him. And, and, and as we continue to seek his face, meaning desiring and knowing his character and wanting him, being in his presence, more than anything, more than anything, he can give us all of that. He gives us all of that. He gives us all of him every day. And for that moment, when it comes to his presence, for his moment as he seeks, as we seek him, Just say thank you. Just give him all the glory, all the praise, and he will continue to bless us. He will continue to keep us and continue to love us. Eternal and all-wise God, we seek your face this morning. We seek your presence this morning. We give you glory, honor, and praise this morning. We love you so much, God, that we bow down before you. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.